So what I think uh, companies should do when trying to hire engineers in particular is um, try to test for, uh, not, not for knowledge, but for potential. Marian Marshalek is the Principal Malware Researcher at G-Data Advanced Analytics. Marion was named in Forbes Top 30 Under 30 in the Technology Europe Division this year and was winner of the Female Reverse Engineer. Marion also lectures at the University of Applied Sciences in St. Poulton. She joins us now on Cloud Moves TV. Marion, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to have you on. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. Now, the government earlier this year in Germany passed legislation requiring at least 30% of non-executive board members. They have to be women. And unless these positions are filled with women, they have to remain empty. So do you think this type of bureaucracy is actually going to work and tackle the issue of gender diversity? This is a tricky question. So um, of course by putting up this rule there's a certain incentive that companies actually have to follow and have to put women up on their boards. Um, I do not think this will solve the problem but it sets a statement. Um, the problem that we have uh, with, with female leadership roles and also with, with women in technology is that in many, many heads or in many uh, consciousnesses there is the, the thought that women cannot actually uh, perform in these, uh, these sorts of jobs. This is something that I, I frequently see when people are surprised, like, you're an engineer? Like, really? Really? And then it's like, by setting these kind of rules, um, People actually have to realize that it is necessary to have women in these positions. I'm, I'm not sure I comply with, with the regulation to, to get women onto boards and into these positions by law. But I do certainly think that we need such rules to, um, to wake, wake people up or wake the society up in, in thinking that women are actually able to, to perform in these kind of roles. No, you're right, and I, I do agree, like it or not, certainly sending out a strong message that we do need to increase the, the number of women within the tech sector. And gender diverse companies are actually 15% more likely to outperform financially their counterparts who aren't as diverse. So how can we really drive this message home to employers? You're literally going to make more money if you employ more women. Well, this is going to be challenging. So. In my experience, humans aren't very receptive to statistics. Um, okay. So it's happened in the past that um, humans or, or companies are totally stuck to the way they have been doing things because this has proven them to be successful. Um, I do believe that also by putting this, this fact out there and by communicating it to companies that maybe some minds wake up and realize, oh my god, this could be a way to go, like let's try to enforce this. And actually in the past few years I've seen a lot of efforts to, to empower women in, in leading positions or in, in technology, which I think is a very good, good way to go. So I do believe that by, by putting out this as an, an incentive, um, companies might actually rethink their, their policy and their, their way they're going. Now, there are more than 900,000 unfilled ICT positions across Europe. Why aren't companies tapping into the vast volume of available female talent? That might be... For one reason, because they are not aware of the talent to be there. Because in my experience, female engineers or women in all sorts of uh, positions, they tend to hold back. They tend to not talk too much about their talent and not put out their, their results too loudly because they're scared or intimidated by um, being pointed out as not being legitimate or not being talented enough to, to fill the position they're aiming after. This might be one point, that, not that the companies do not want to see these uh, applications or applications from, from these uh, women, but that the ladies actually do not believe that they can grow up to these to the challenges that they will be facing in specific positions. On the other side, I also see obstacles uh, for of, of jobs. Like I've, I have in the past attended a lot of interviews where a lot of specific questions have been asked to prove my knowledge, and. Um, I do believe that, uh, that female engineers in particular tend to hold back about their knowledge. So the girls I, I teach in my classes are very quick to answer, I don't know. The boys in my classes are very quick to start thinking, oh, could I know? 
do I maybe have an answer somewhere? Have I seen this before? And I don't see the same, the same mindset um, on answering such specific questions. So what I think uh, companies should do when trying to hire engineers in particular is um, try to test for, uh, not, not for knowledge, but for potential. Okay. Try to see what the candidate is able to, to perform in terms of how, how well to perform in, in working up a topic on, them, on, on their own. And, and how uh, quick they are in understanding problems and in finding solutions, as opposed to how many answers can they, can they give on uh, particular technical questions. Now, Marion, women who do actually work in the ICT sector earn almost 9% more than other women in other industries. So even with these fantastic, great financial incentives, why aren't more women engaging with STEM education as much as they could? Well, that is also, this is a question I actually I uh, do not really understand myself. So I, I work as an engineer. I have I have a reasonable salary, and I enjoy that salary a lot. Not in terms of of getting rich or making a lot of money, but in terms of independence. So I'm very proud to be able to to support myself, to to buy my own things, to buy my own drinks at bars, to like sponsor my lifestyle that I that I like to live, and be independent of of anyone else. What I believe. So I've been I've been growing up. Uh, in a family where earning money was actually a, a thing to pursue. And I do see in, in a lot of other families or, or with my students that they're being raised to believe that they should follow their dreams, which is certainly not, not wrong. Follow your dreams, but keep in mind that at some point you, you will be alone in your life and you'll be uh, wanting to support yourself in a, on a certain level of, of lifestyle. And at that point in life, um, always hunting for your dreams might not have been the best solution, but sometimes thinking about the uh, economic incentives or the economic outcome of a career is also a very good thing to um, keep in mind. Now, Forbes said that you were one of the top reverse engineers of government malware around. Do you think that you've always had the recognition that you really deserve throughout your personal life and were you encouraged in tech? Oh my god, yes. Actually, Actually, I think the problem for me was the other way around. So people would recognize my work before I would recognize my work. I had the same issue of, of holding back. Like, um, when was that? In 2013, I participated in the reverse engineering challenge. I won the challenge, and when I had won the challenge, I was still not, not believing that I had actually done this. So I was telling myself, you did this once, you might not be able to do this a second time. And people were like, oh my god, you are a great reverse engineer, that paper was amazing. I was like, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. And half a year later, I, I was still like fighting my own, um, my own mind in, in holding me back from, from keeping on uh, doing uh, reverse engineering as a living. So yes, um, I think as a female engineer, nowadays you receive a lot of recognition. Maybe even more than in other fields, other than, than technology. So I was always very, very well received and very welcomed uh, by colleagues and by, by peers. And uh, I could have really made my life a lot easier by, by admitting myself that I should just keep going instead of holding back. And Marion, just one very last question. What would you say to those individuals who actually haven't been able to attend the Cloud Expo Frankfurt today and are thinking of coming next year? What would you say to those people? Well, to come. Well, that's what you say. Um, it's a very, very vibrant uh, event here. A lot of people walking around the alleys and asking very interesting questions. So I've given a talk this morning about conflict zones on, on the internet and uh, the room was packed. So I was really surprised how many people are here and how many people are actually also interested in security fields. Fantastic. Marion, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you. That's Marion Marshallek speaking to us here. I'm Emma Boyle and this is Cloud Moves TV.